Hey there, YouTube family. Happy Sunday to you guys. I wanted to get a video out in prep of this coming week. This is another earnings week. and We've got companies like NVIDIA that I know a lot of you guys are interested in, but Zoom is reporting, Peloton's reporting. I'm gonna give you guys an overview of the companies that I'm watching this week that are reporting, but more importantly, at the end of this week, we've got the Fed Powell talking at Jackson Hole. This is a big event, and the market's gonna be looking for a continued direction from him. Jackson Hole, Jackson Hole next week. Next week, uh, Jackson Hole. At Jackson Hole, there's really going to be two two points of focus. It will really come down to Powell to be uh, on message. Don't really think that we're going to have, we're going to hear uh, a big change in narrative. You're getting a Fed that was hawkish and raised rates very substantially. What is the Fed ultimately looking for? They're likely to take a look at supply demand imbalances in labor markets to decide how much more if at all, they need to adjust the overnight Fed funds rate higher. Lean on to, into a hawkish bias still. A FOMC participant should be looking at the last three months worth of data. The Fed has done so much already in terms of delivering those hikes. These are not going to be kind of near term policy decisions of what they may do with rates uh, next month. Rate hikes at the September meeting. Maybe the Fed doesn't need to hike. We are not certain that the last hike is behind us. The Fed keeping rates higher for longer. The Fed will have to be more aggressive, raising rates higher and keeping rates higher for longer. Last year when this happened, it absolutely moved the markets and we're gonna be watching for it to do it again. The markets are in a shaky place. The Magnificent Seven all went into correction territory, the last of which was Meta, finally joining the movement to the downside and going into full correction mode. You guys know that we tracked Tesla every day last week and it's actually beyond a correction mode. 10% would be correction Tesla's well down at 30% pullback. We are expecting a reversal this week, but we're still in very shaky waters. There's no guarantees to any of this. I'm gonna introduce a company that I haven't spoken to you guys before. I'm gonna get into that in just a minute, but I wanted to go over the two trades that were the most successful last week. Are those the two trades that are gonna to continue to be the most successful going into this week, or are we gonna get a turnaround? Basically, the number one trade last week was to short the SPY load up on puts on the SPY, printed all week long. And then the other one that's quite popular is the inverse ETF SQQQ. Finally, coming up off its bottom that it established at around $16. At the beginning of last week, I predicted that we could get up to $22. And we're very, very close to that. What I think is going to happen is we're gonna to touch it. We're actually gonna probably hit $22.50. And I'm thinking that after that, it could pull back to support at around $20. We are in a correction that I've been talking about for the last week and so it is time for plays like the SQQQ or just puts on the SPY, they're the ones that are leading profits right now. And the next question is, well, Josh, where is it going from here? There's no guarantee of knowing where it's gonna go, but up above us are two potential price points that it could swing to. One is $25, there's a fair amount of resistance there because people bought in at $25, they've been holding it all the way down to 16, and when the Magnificent Seven, if they were to continue to fall down, this would continue to go up and it would likely hit that wall of resistance people would begin to cash out of their position that they've been holding. If this downtrend continued, I would say that it could go as high as $29. That's all that I can see at the moment, but we'll cover it again in the coming days. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Happy Sunday to you guys again. Thanks for hitting the like. If you want to get daily videos and insights on stocks and crypto, you got to hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's get into the companies that I'm watching this week that are reporting earnings. If I don't mention your favorite company, let me know in the comment section. Monday, tomorrow, the one that is of interest to me is Zoom. They're reporting after market close. They're the first company of interest that is reporting this week for me. Then on Tuesday, we've got Lowe's and Baidu. Let me quickly just comment on Baidu. This thing came down 85% from its all-time high, which is an incredible pullback. Right now, it's sitting 65% down from its all-time high. That would give it a loss of $232 per share. If they give the market any trouble on earnings on Tuesday, then this thing would flash down to $100. And like a lot of these Chinese stocks, Baidu actually has an inverse head and shoulders after having moved back, losing $232 worth of value per share. It's now got an inverse head and shoulders, which means that it is more likely over the course of the next 12 months to go up from here, but there's no guarantee. I'll be talking about some of the Chinese stocks later this week. Wednesday is the big day for me. There's Nvidia, Snowflake, 
Bath and Body Works, I'm not really in that one, but I might comment on it, and Peloton, I know that I've covered that before, and I might give us some updates this week on Peloton. On Thursday, I'm watching Futu, F-U-T-U. You're like, well, who is Futu? Futu is the parent company that owns Moomoo, and so I do keep an eye on that. I'm gonna, it's actually been a profitable trade, having some pretty good price action, and my particular area of interest is the fact that they've recently opened up to the Canadian audience, and there's a ton of Canadians that have been wanting to get on board the Moomoo app, and we're seeing that happen, and so Futu could have a huge boost this year in additional revenue because of that accomplishment and that growth. And so I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Futu app. And then we've got Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree is kind of a gauge for the economy. When those type of stocks do better, it's more defensive plays. It's because people are running out of money and they got to turn over and start buying stuff at the Dollar Tree on the cheap. And then you got Intuit. Intuit is a play that we need to keep our eyes on. And then at the end of the week, actually on Sunday, over in China, August 27th, China's Evergrande Group reports. Now this stock has fallen. To say it's fallen from its highs is an understatement. It's currently below 20 cents. It's lost 96% of its value. They're already in big trouble. There's not a doubt in my mind that the company is going belly up and bankrupt and that stock should be worthless. I don't see any opportunity there, but I'm going to be watching the earnings because that storyline and the news that comes out of it is going to affect the Chinese market, the U.S. market, and the world. Okay, guys, the stock that I'm going to cover for you guys today that I've never really talked about before is Zoom. All right, let's just kind of take a step back and kind of recap the history. Their earnings track record for the last two years straight, they've actually beat earnings per share 100% of the time. They've beaten revenue 63% of the time, and yet the stock is way beat down. The last four earnings, the stock has sold off. So the last four times they've reported earnings, the stock has gone significantly lower, which brings us to where we're at today and why it's becoming a little bit of interest to me. We all know that when COVID came out, this was one of the companies that was dramatically affected as everybody left the workplace and went home and began to have Zoom calls, teachers, corporations, students, everybody was Zooming to the extent that the word Zoom became a verb, sort of like when you go to Google something. They had such dominance in this particular area of video calling. When you wanted to get on a, a laptop and look at somebody and talk to them, that was a Zoom call, even though there's many companies that do it. Kathy Woods was a big supporter at Zoom when their price began to surge. Over there at ARK Invest, she predicted that Zoom shares would hit $1,500 per share by 2026. You know, and on that note, some of these predictions that analysts have given, in my view, these analysts need to be prosecuted. They've led a lot of people down a dead end road and losing tons of money. Kathy Woods predicting Zoom going to $1,600 by 2026 was grossly irresponsible because in reality, it's fallen $524. It's lost per share, dropping 89% from its run-up. The stock started at $60 in April of 2019, right before COVID. And around the time that COVID began to become a reality, it was actually trading at $70 right before the crisis in January of 2020. And as the share price drove up in 2020, it hit $588. So it went from roughly $70 to close to a $600 price per share. Its market cap went up to $159 billion, and today it's sitting at a sad $20 billion. It's not the trillion dollar company that uh, Kathy Wood said it would be. This stock has been punished significantly, and there are two reasons why it's been punished. Basically, the revenue began to slow down, and these guys were spending like crazy, and they had overall shrinkage. So spending and shrinkage. Those are the two big problems with Zoom. It's the reason why the stock has fallen so badly. It's not perceived by Wall Street as a company that has a moat because you got Microsoft Office Teams stealing customers left and right. And as a result, the stock price has come down. I want to briefly talk about Zoom in the news. Right this week, investors focus on Zoom sales growth during Q2 earnings. What they're going to be looking for is shrinkage. Q1 showed the slowest growth record of only 3%. So the whole company only grew 3% in this first quarter of 2023. And the consensus of analysts is that in quarter two, they're only gonna grow 1%. Now, the FUD that's largely circulating around Zoom is that these guys have had shrinking sales for nine straight quarters and that this quarter, quarter two of 2023, 
could be the 10th straight quarter of shrinking sales. The other big area of FUD that analysts are looking to come out of this Q2 earnings is that Microsoft is continuing to steal market share and they're going to come out and lower the guidance some more. That's kind of what happened and why Zoom's stock price has been in trouble. If you were a Zoom investor and you participated in the run-up and you never took profits and now you're back here to where it all began, that's one of the first points I want to make is that we are back to square one as if the company had never spiked, had never grown, had never ramped up in sales. And now that makes it interesting because all of the ramp up of growth that had occurred with COVID has essentially been taken out of the value of the stock. So we're sort of back to square one, which I think opens up an opportunity for people to begin to look at the stock differently. And then here's the big reason or the big opportunity that could come into play tomorrow in, uh, in Zoom's earnings, and that's how leadership has taken the last couple of months and begun to think about how to incorporate AI. If they come out with any form of growth, or if they come out with a convincing AI story, it could be the beginning of a move up. I'm going to get to a conclusion here in just a minute, but here's what I want you guys to see. All the value of COVID has been taken out. It's back to $70 right where it began before COVID. They have not been able to grow the business. It's been shrinking. So they're trying to protect the growth of the company. But all the markups been taken out of the stock. And now they have the opportunity to potentially come out, take some of this money that they've made and some of this money that they've raised and introduce some AI buzz around Zoom. Now, I'm not saying that they've done it. But this is something to watch for because the company, it could drop some more. This thing could go from around $65 where it's sitting. It could potentially fluctuate down to $60, but I see little more room to the downside. It's largely flattened out. It's become forgetful. Nobody's talking about Zoom anymore. It's lost all that markup value, and that's when stocks can become interesting. It's not like the Magnificent Seven that people are still wondering whether or not they're overpriced or overvalued. A lot of people are concerned that NVIDIA is overvalued. We're going to dive into that before this coming Wednesday. But we know for a fact that Zoom, at least it appears right now, is not overvalued because we're back to square one. And so does that mean that there's more opportunity to the upside with the introduction of AI profit generating tools on their platform than there is potential loss to the downside? That's the question I'm going to leave you guys with today. I'd love to hear from you guys. One thing's for certain, NVIDIA is my number one stock to watch this week, but I'm really interested in keeping an eye on Zoom and what the story comes out of those earnings that they report after market tomorrow. All right, I've got a little bit of technical to review with you guys before we wrap up this conversation about Zoom. We saw unusual options activity. The $65 strike price expiring in November. There was a significant inflow of calls on the $65 strike price expiring in November, and there was a significant inflow, unusual options activity, on the $70 strike price expiring in September. That's interesting to keep your eye on. And then if you look at the technicals, you see that there is an incredible bullish divergence that's been forming in Zoom for quite a while. What bullish divergence looks like, it's when the stock price continues to go down, but the momentum or rate to the downside begins to decrease as well. That means that there's more buyers than there are sellers, even though the stock price is getting lower and lower and lower. And so as we're getting closer to that $65 range, that's when people have begun to nibble back on Zoom. And so we see that bullish divergence in the Zoom chart. We also see that the MACD and the general price action has really significantly begun to straighten out and to compress. That form of compression often leads to expansion. So unless they come out with really, really bad numbers and break down to the downside, this if they come out with decent numbers, this could get the attention of Wall Street and we could begin to go into a trend reversal. I'm not predicting it. I'm watching it. It's a stock of interest. Again, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. So just a recap, the question is, how good is the CEO going to be about spinning the AI buzz and then from the perspective of the earnings they report if we see a tick up and surprise the analyst with better revenue than expected this thing could pop up to $70 and the top of the range that I would identify at that point would be $100 which is a pretty nice potential gain that's possible and then the downside risk doesn't seem to be as threatening as the upside potential if the earnings were to come out bad I think largely the stock's going to remain sleepy and we could see it drift down 
to $60. So there's a risk of a $5 loss, but the potential of a $35 gain. That's how I'm looking at it. That's how I'm watching it. I hope you guys found this entertaining and helpful. We're going to get into some other stocks going into this week, as well as Tesla. I've got some interesting technicals to share with you guys on Tesla tomorrow, as well as some other stocks. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful and restful Sunday. Again, thank you for hitting the like. Hit the subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Peace and blessings, my friends. Take care.